is Dr. Sola coming to you from New Jersey. Uh, today we are going to discuss two things, batteries and the BMS. I'll try to get this in under seven minutes. Excuse the mess, this is my office. I have not used it in a while, so uh, everything in the house gets dumped in here. Weight benches, as you can see a weight bench right there. Weights, all the junk, computers, broken up stuff. So pardon my suitcase which I traveled with. So pardon Christmas trees, uh, what do you call those things, bases. So my apologies for the mess. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to talk about, let's start with the batteries first. As you all know, just before I left Nigeria, I switched uh, my batteries from the lithium ions to the flooded batteries. And on a day we generate over 12 kilowatt hours, we still haven't been able to get the batteries fully charged. So think about it. I put in over 12 kilowatt hours and I get back less than one kilowatt hour. So that's a ridiculous waste of energy. Yes, I recognize that I have to uh, get a fork, get a, a generator, uh, charge the battery for two days at 60 amps or 100 amps for two days before I can get any meaningful capacity out of that. But if you think about it, it sounds really stupid. Why am I going to spend all that effort and all that money just so I can get a battery to perform as it should? And um, I told uh, the folks in Lagos to remove the leather seed and go back to our lithium ion batteries. Now, what are the major differences? One, a lithium ion, you put one kilowatt hour in, you're going to get at least 900 watt hours out of it, which for me is a no brainer. Uh, number two, it charges so much faster. Um, if I if I turn it on, let's say it goes you know it goes off at night for whatever reason. Um, I get good sunshine within an hour and a half, two hours. I can run my water pump. I can turn my fridge and my freezer on. I can I cannot do that with the lead acid batteries as they are at the moment. Um, I don't have to deal with the smells. I don't have to worry about equalizing. I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. However, having said that, we've been using the Nissan Leaf, the Chevy Volt, we've used um, uh, Nissan Leaf generation one and two, we use the LG Chem, we've used the Tesla. The Tesla and the LG Chem seem to give you capacity once you charge them properly from, actually let's use the Tesla Smart, gives you capacity from the minute you put charge in. The LG Chem requires you get it to 63, 64 volts, it's a 16 S, before you get any meaningful capacity out of it. The Nissan, the Chevy seem to give you capacity from the minute you charge it, so does the Fiat. The Nissan, the jury is out on it. I have some Gen 1s that weren't the best, and they seem to require a whole lot more from them in order to get capacity out of it. Um, I have to balance charge them to 4.1. Now, balance charging means each of the cell has to be at 4.1, and I keep them at 4.1 till they get 4. That's a tough one. It really is a tough one. And we'll get into why it's difficult. So for us to get that to happen, we had to get separate balancers and equalizers, not our BMS, not the tiny little things that come on the BMSs that are 200 milliamp, 200 milliamps. The charger gives you 1.2 amps. But if you consider the size of our battery banks, that is not enough. So we've not been able to fully charge my Lisan Leaf at 4.1. All of them are 4.1 because these capacities vary from cell to from cell to cell and from module to module. So I found a new balancer um, that I'm going to use. It's actually a 48 volt one with um, four, well, we'll call it a four as he has one, two, three different four, one, two, three, four, and you can get from one all the way 10 amps. Once we have it connected, I'll show you. And then we'll try to balance charge our batteries and see if we'll get full capacity out of it. I have not really gotten full capacity out of my Nissan Leaf and even at 40 amps, 40 amp hours, that should give me 2, kilo, 2, 2 kilowatts and we're not, we're not seeing that from them. Uh, back, so that's it for the batteries, no more lead acid batteries, no more smells, no more crap. Maybe when I go back to Nigeria just for experiment's sake, 
I'll get a generator, we'll charge it for God knows how long, and then if it doesn't work, we'll just decide to sell them for scrap. On the BMS, so, you know, there's a lot they don't tell about BMS. And as you do this, you start to realize that you don't know what you think you know. One, um, I purchased quite a bunch of them. I think I must have 10 BMSs that I'm not currently using. So you go and you say you want to buy a 14S BMS. And you get a 14S BMS with a discharge of 50 amps, maybe 60 amps. And you're excited, you think that's it, right? Well, what they don't disclose to you is that whatever the discharge current is does not necessarily match what the charge current is. So they tell you, yes, you can discharge up to 100 amps, but you cannot charge up to 100 amps. Our charger was a perfect example. The charger is 16 S and the 24 T, you can charge up to 100 amps. You can charge up to 100 amps, discharge up to 100 amps. There is a 16 which we have that has a charge and discharge port. Uh, it's limited to 50 amps. And we found that out the hard way when the wires melted from too much heat. We're trying to push over 80 amps into it. So those are limitations they don't tell you. Uh, when you buy a, a BMS, make sure you pay attention to the discharge, the charge current, I'm sorry. That is critical because if the charge current is too low, you're going to either burn the BMS up or you're going to melt the wires because it got too hot. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, this is Dr. Solar coming to you from the good old USA. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button below. Um, if you have suggestions, questions or comments, please post them below. I want to thank our newest subscribers. I think we picked up 10, subscribe, 10 new subscribers since we did the last video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We welcome, we always welcome, uh, we always welcome you. Quick summary, uh, even though I've said bye-bye, uh, I'm trying to do the, um, what's his name, Colombo? Colombo routine where he leaves and he goes, but. So here it is, uh, one more question. We've been doing this since 2014. We've used AGM batteries and lead acid batteries, uh, flooded lead acid batteries. In my opinion, the flooded lead acid batteries are better than the AGM batteries because you could do an equalization to fix any imbalance issues. But honestly, when you think about the smells, the burns and all the crap, it's not worth it at all. You're better off just, if you can afford lithium ion, do lithium ion. As long as you're able to balance them properly and charge them properly, they will outperform anything else on the market. Thank you for watching.